Alderman Farms. It is. It's after 12, a little after 12. I'm getting ready to prepare our lunch. And I've been working on strawberries, and so I want to make strawberry pie today, too. We're going to actually have that for our Easter uh, dessert. And so it's a real quick, easy recipe. I'm going to start with that now. And I've just kind of thrown this pie crust recipe together, kind of split up a few recipes because... Uh, Number one, I want to use butter in my recipe, so we'll see how that turns out, see if that works good for Easter. And also, um, I only want to make one pie crust today, so uh, most recipes call for two or three cups, two or three pie crusts, it makes that many. So anyway, I'm just going to make one pie crust today. So let me get my recipe here, and I've done, um, and I'm going to put one cup of flour, and I like to do, um, my pie crust in my blender or food processor to let it mix up for me because it makes it much simpler. So we're going to just put one cup of flour. And we're going to put a third of a cup of butter in here. Some of it's soft, some of it's cold, so we'll see how it mixes up. Be trial and error live. How about that? <laughs> and some of y'all are probably shouting at the camera, no, no, but I can't hear you. All right, now I'm going to have salt in here too, a half a teaspoon of salt. I guess you have to turn the camera. And this will be loud. Just want to make sure that that's mixing up good, blending together. I've always hated making pie crust until, until I started making them this way. So let's get some water. And you want to do uh, cold water. And this is going to be uh, two to uh, three tablespoons of water. My recipe went away. Make sure, yeah, two to three tablespoons of water, cold water. And I'm going to go ahead and let it be blending while I add my water. Yeah, we wanted it. To, we're wanting it to come to a ball, and so it's not there yet. I just want to make sure I didn't have a puddle of water in the middle. So, Now. Say that again. It's starting to stick together. Tommy keeps saying, say that again. And I put about almost four tablespoons of water in here actually. And so see the dough? It's it's all it's sticking together nicely now. Let's 
see, I have some wax paper. I'm now, I've never been great with doing pie crust, but with this strawberry pie, it's only a bottom crust, so it's not, it doesn't matter if it's pretty or ugly, so it's not going to be seen, it's going to be eaten, so. Um, I've gotten these uh, strawberries from uh, Louisiana. We live in Mississippi now, and I've gotten them from Louisiana. A friend of mine from the farmer's market, Mr. Bobby, goes down to Louisiana every year and gets strawberries. And so I got two flats, and I've frozen one flat. Well, I've got them bagged up anyway, ready to go in the freezer. And so uh, that I'm going to be using some strawberries from Louisiana. Louisiana strawberries. I really like the way the dough did. So far I do anyway. We'll see if it cracks when I turn it over in the pie plan. But it really doesn't matter if it does. I can uh, pinch it together and plus we'll poke holes in it with a fork. Yeah, my fingernails have red and my hands were stained red <laughs> from cutting up the strawberries today. see if that's going to fit it. It's been a few years since I have made pie crust, so I'm very pleased with how easy this has done this time. So I'll definitely write this recipe down and keep it. Hopefully it'll bake up good too. I could have made it a little bigger around here because it's not quite reaching there. And I'll show you what I usually do with that. Another says you need to do a regular segment, cooking with Patty. Well, you know, I was actually thinking about that, if I could do that every Thursday. You just take your knife and go around the edge and cut it like that. And where I have, can, can, can they see right here, like yep. where it didn't quite go? Yep. I'm just going to take and just pinch some of that in right there. Turn it that way. Cover my little holes. Like I said, this has been a while since I made pie crust, but I am very, very pleased with the way this one has done. Now, with the with the uh, strawberry, uh, it's, it's a it's going to be already cooked when I put it in the shell. So, and it's going to be thickened also. So I'm not. I, I don't want my pie shell to bubble up because I'm a I'm a pre cook my pie shell before I put my strawberries in there and everything. So. Um, and maybe this is wrong, but this is the way I've always done it. Even when I buy the pie shells, you take before you bake it and you prick it with a fork. This will help it to not make a big bubble. Hopefully it will help to do that anyway. This is what we've always done. It's one of those things. Mama did it, so I did it too. So, okay. Now, I have my oven preheated to 350. I'm going to go ahead and get this in there baking. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes because I want to bake this all the way done. So, uh, I think that'll be enough time. You know what? I'm going to do it for five minutes because it would be bad if I burned it. Dry Little Farmstead wants to know where did you get your rolling pin? My rolling pin? Oh, and if I can get it right. Bet in the Farm is where we got it. Um, Tommy actually got it for me for a, a Christmas gift, right? 
I believe. Yep. So, and I love it. I love the way it rolls and everything. So, okay. Um, Next. Somebody, somebody posted a link to Bet in the Farm. Next, I'm going to get my strawberry, uh, the uh, filling for my strawberry pie going. And I actually, you actually have to cook it. And where is my recipe for that? There it is, right there. Um, now, this recipe usually is for two pies. I'm just testing this out before Easter. And so I'm not making the two pies. For Easter, I will make the two pies. So, uh, I've got everything measured out. I try to do everything where we go quicker. So, first off, you're going to add, now this is for one pie. I'm adding a half a cup of sugar, uh, one and a half tablespoons of strawberry jello, and one tablespoon of flour. And we're going to stir that up. I didn't get spoons out. That's one thing I didn't think about, a spoon. You're going to stir that up good, where everything will be mixed together. And to that, you're going to add a half a cup of water. When we put this on the stove, we're going to bring it to a boil and watch it very closely. I'm going to try and boil it for about a minute, but I don't know if I'll be it'll 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 bubble up. You got to stir it constantly. So I'm, I, I do not want this boiled over on the stove, which I've done before, is uh, a very sticky mess to uh, clean up. So I'll put my, that on there. All right, now that's heating up. I'm going to try and keep an eye on that while I go on to get... I'm going to start mixing up. We didn't put it on the description. I kind of decided at the last minute we're going to do some uh, rolls, too. And it's, I'm only going to let them rise one time to try and hopefully have them baking or risen up before the show is over. Let me get some warm water here. Um, I didn't even get a bowl out, did I? I thought I did. Maybe not. I don't have a bowl. i use this bowl. say warm water it's just uh, you know it's definitely not hot water some people's uh, water uh, out of their faucet is very very hot mine is not and I think oh I, I don't even remember how exactly how hot it's supposed to be warm water so you're gonna put one cup of warm water and egg over here. Where is my recipe at? I've got recipes everywhere. So, Let's see, one egg, and I have farm fresh eggs, so I always crack it in something else before I put it in. Do that, and a tablespoon of yeast. And my stuff is boiling, it's bubbling a little bit. A fourth of a cup of sugar. Let me see if I can stir this right quick. I don't know why I always use a fork when I mix stuff up. I'm gonna beat up my egg. Okay, now. These rolls are amazing too. They're some of my some of my most favorite rolls, and I used to make them to go to the farmers market. And they have their have whole wheat flour in them and white flour. So, okay, that's good. Let's see. We got water, egg, sugar. Five seconds. Hmm? Oh. Water, egg, sugar. I haven't got the margarine in there yet. Butter, not margarine. I have margarine written down. 
I used to use margarine all the time. Okay. It needs to cook longer, which I figured it would, so. I'm gonna do another five minutes, so my butter. When I used to cook for the farmer's market um, a long time ago, I used to use just margarine, but to keep my prices down. But we don't eat margarine, and so I decided a few years ago to go to the ingredients that we eat, because if I have it left over, then I don't mind eating it. And people are more and more wanting to have something that's better for them, and I personally believe butter is better for you than margarine, so. Now this was room temperature butter. Oop. I show them how it's doing it. Look at that. Oh, it quit bubbling that up. Anyway, it's bubbling up good now. And it happens so fast, and I really have, I boil this over on my stove. And you need to have it in a pot it was only, y'all saw how deep it was, but it wants to bubble up really high, and it'll come over this pot and nothing flat. Okay. That's all there is to that. I'm going to get something to put it in um, to cool it down a little bit. Let's see. We can maybe get this whole thing done where you can see it. Y'all hadn't been addressing many of the comments just because Patty's looks so busy. Uh, we'll come yeah. back and try yeah, to I catch some at the I end. I can't do two things at one time. I've just put... No, but she can do four things at one time. No, I can't, but I can't talk. <laughs> I've put uh, some ice and some water just in this pan. I picked this pan just where this, can, this pot can sit down in it. Because this liquid needs to be cooled down before you pour it in the pie shell. What if you set that on the granite? Yeah, that might help. Huh? There. We'll try that and see how that works. Um, let's see. Okay. Let me put this book over here where I can be looking at the right book. Okay. So I have my water, my egg, my sugar, and I have my butter, and I have my yeast, so I need to put salt. And that calls for three-fourths teaspoon of salt. I'm not used to these, the way they're making these containers now. All right, there's the salt. And if you haven't seen it, salt does not kill the yeast. Uh, Tara over at Living, Living on a Dime did an experiment and it does not kill the yeast. I had heard that a long time ago, and so I changed the way I was doing things, and I never saw a difference. So I went back to, I like adding my salt to my liquid ingredients like this, and my sugar, because I feel like it gets mixed up good. All right, I'll go over my recipe over and over too, because I don't want to forget anything. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put, it's gonna have a total of three cups of flour, in this recipe. So there's one cup of white. It calls for two cups of white flour and one cup of whole wheat. And I actually, where is it? Has some, this is einkorn flour. I thought I heard something over there. It scared me. I thought I was boiling over. And it doesn't have to be exact. This is a very uh, moist dough. And really after this, I go by feel. I get one cup of each in here. And then I'll go by feel. Because if you, you, you realize that most uh, bread recipes and everything, that call, it calls for three cups of flour to only one cup of water. But you have an egg in here too that's adding in extra moisture. So, 
it may it may end up taking a little bit more than oops, your cup your three cups of flour and then it's raining here today too and that makes a big difference a little more time on the pie crust how much moisture is in your air it may make your dough more moist or more dry and I do have a KitchenAid mixer a lot of times I uh, mix up my dough in it Tommy I can answer any questions if there's any questions well, Sadie Price was asking about a ninja because uh, Daryl two family are saying they make butter in their ninja yeah so uh, I sent Sadie a link to uh, Amazon to show the ninja that we use I, I love that my ninja I I had I've had a blender I've had a food processor and all these different things and I wanted to kind of more consolidate and not have all the the different machines you know and so that's what i like about the ninja i have a, a a blender we'll be using that later on that goes on it and then the food processor and of course the food processor is a cheat you can grate your cheese i use it to grate cheese all the time with it with it and it's just it's so easy and i'm gonna tell you one other thing that i love about it is that it's so easy to clean because yeah. some of them are really complicated to clean and and you see how easy when I just sat it on there, it, it, it hooks right on. It's, it's, not, it's not like you have to hold your mouth just the right way to get it to come on or to get it to hook on. Yeah. Now, but they are expensive. I guess I've never had one that cost as much money. But I have had uh, numerous other ones that I did not like near as much. Yeah. So. Martha Lee on Facebook says, love watching your videos. Going to try this pie. Oh, great. Yeah. It's a family favorite. In fact, I don't know what I did with my recipe. I had to call my sister this morning and ask her for the recipe because I couldn't find it. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn Mills Smith says, Hi, I watch you all the time. Well, thank you, well, Carolyn. Well, hi, Carolyn. Thank you so much. Now, uh, this, this, these rolls would normally, you would cover this dough and let it rise one time like this. And then, actually, I would put it in an oiled bowl. Uh, you'd let it rise one time, and then you would um, knead it down a little bit, and then you would roll it into your rolls. And also, you can make hamburger buns with this, too. But since we're trying to get this done for the show and everything, I'm just going to go ahead and go straight into making my rolls. I've done it before. Sometimes they don't get quite the rise, but they're still delicious. The hamburger buns are great. Yes. Made with that yes. recipe. Yes, we love making the ham make them into hamburger buns. Let me get that. And I spray my pan. Is the camera where it needs to be? Yeah. Okay. And I didn't even know they were making this when I, I go to a uh, bargain grocery store. This is pan coconut oil Pam. So I was. I hope I can find some more of this. And it was a uh, dollar forty-nine, so it was <clears throat> really cheap. But I, I sucked some of that in my throat. All right, now how should I position this, Tommy? Is this good? Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I do. Um, let's see. There's a little chunk of butter right there. Use that. I like to use old hands. Now, of course, if you want the floury look, you can. Uh, just put flour on your hands or whatever. I prefer that it be more shiny than floury. And what I do is I just, I broke my dough in half and then I broke it in half again. And then I'll break this in half again and I'll go and so on just to get the size rolls. Of course, you know, with used to baking for the farmer's market, I try, I, things are kind of stream, I do things kind of streamlined. Three, six, nine, twelve. 15, 18. Oh, thanks, Daryl. Daryl said the camera operator is doing a fantastic job. <laughs> now, each one of these I'm going to break into three. And it just depends on what size rolls you want. Then I'm going to make 24 rolls. And see, we'll have some of these left over. And Tommy and I will eat little uh, ham buns on these for lunch, too. Yep. 
white picket fence, she's going to check it here. The buzzer's going to go off in about 15 seconds. She put it originally for five minutes. It wasn't quite done. Another five wasn't quite done. So she's put it for another five minutes. And she'll be checking it now in about five seconds. The beeper will be going off. Some of these were getting smaller, so I decided to, I don't know how many I'll end up having, but it'll be enough, so. Mm, let me see, that might be almost done. Well, thank you, Tammy McWhorter Davis. So, uh, so enjoy your videos. I live in East Central Mississippi. Go Tigers. Oh, wow. Go Tigers. All right, now that's good. We're going on 18 minutes now, baking that pie crust. Maybe I should have not baked it on 350. Maybe I should have baked it on a higher temperature. Yeah. This has been know. a while, huh? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't look and see. And look, with the oil hands, well, and it, buttered hands is what I have. You just roll the little balls up. And one thing I am going to do. Oh, well, I guess I could put them in the warming drawer too. Maybe that's what I'll do. Let me turn that on. That way. I was going to say I was going to put them on the stove. Yeah, where the warming drawer will help. Yeah, I think the warming drawer will be more even on it. So. Yeah, Carl, you're right. Congrats to two family homestead. Oh, my their, word. On their guest coming up for their Monday night live stream. Tommy told me that, Daryl and Sherry, and I was like, he's, he's like, guess who is going to be on Two Family? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't have any idea who. And he said, Joel Salatin. The man himself. I can't believe. Joel That's amazing. Salatin is going to be Daryl and Sherry's guest. Uh, close to times, uh, Daryl, I, I get confused. I don't even know what time it is now, half the time. Yeah, but, I know. That's what, like, uh, we know Central Time. Yeah, so. And they may not. I don't even, I don't even know. They're different yeah. time zone than us. All right, the video okay. keeps speeding up. I mean, I know you're fast, but it may be tricking the camera. This. Oh. Let me know if you got any buffering or anything. All my signals look good here, so. All right, I'm putting these in my warming drawer, and hopefully they'll be risen. So y'all remind me about them. I might forget. When do we need to remind you? Let me see if it feels warm. It doesn't feel warm. Maybe I didn't have it closed. Uh, I'm pretty, uh, I'm not good at much, Tammy, but I'm pretty good at that kind of stuff. She said, wow, you pronounced my maiden name correctly. What's her, what was it? McWhorter. Oh, Tammy, I would not have. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> There's no way I would have pronounced it right. Okay, now we've got the pie crust in the oven. It's fixing to come out. Um, rolls in the warmer. Rolls in the warmer. My syrup is cooling. So now it is time, as soon as the pie crust comes out, I'm going to go ahead and get the squash bisque going. So, and it's so easy. It's very, very simple. I have all my stuff here ready, I believe. Oh, and I forgot to see what page it's on. Oh, yeah. Well, it's on my phone. It's on page 22, I believe, of our ebook. Well, it, it should 20, be. Uh... 20, I call it the wrong, I say the wrong name with mom, but. I was going to say simple, 20 easy instant pot recipes. And this, no, it's on 16. I'm sorry. I don't know where I got 22 from. Page 22. And I had to get Tommy to send this to me today because I'm like, I have to go back to my old books to find stuff. I mean, you know, my paper, you know, dig through my stuff. So I have it on my phone now. Okay, we're going to call this ready. Hang on. And hold I it, Oh, look at still. that. I've the got, light needs to adjust. Okay. And it does have a few bubbles in it, not many. I'm going to show you how we uh, deal with those spark bubbles, too. In fact, Tommy, we're going to do... Oh, there's... I need a stick, another stick of butter out, please. All right. All right, I'm going to scoop this up. Cameraman here. is being temporarily reassigned. Let's see. Need a cooling rack. All right. Now. We got it. That has to be completely cooled. All right. So now for the squash bisque. Oh, let me turn that off. All right, for the squash bisque, it's it's very very simple. 
It's, it was simple when it was on top of the stove, but it wasn't near this fast. Now I'm gonna show you, this was a quart of squash, but I've had it in the refrigerator thawing out and I've lost all my juice. It was uh, blanched. And so I'm gonna add a little extra chicken broth to this because my squash has shrunk down so bad. So, but you, what you want is about a quart of squash. Now let me get my recipe up again. Or, and then look, it can be six, it can be six uh, fresh squash uh, that's not cooked, or it can be a quart of frozen squash, or it can be a quart of canned squash. Typically, I use canned squash on this. All right, and then you want to add one cup of chicken broth to it, um, a half a stick of butter, and this is uh, three large potatoes diced right there and this calls for two carrots diced if you don't like carrots you don't have to put as much this is actually one carrot because it was a pretty big carrot and one onion cut up so there we go there's that let's see let me go over it again the squash butter potatoes onion carrots chicken broth now salt and pepper and Tony's to taste. I do Tony's in it and I do salt. And you're going to be tasting this afterwards and um and to see how to see if you need to you can add more uh, salt in a little bit. All right, now this is going to go in the instant pot. And this is a 6 quart pot that I'm using and this is going to go for uh, manual high pressure for 4 minutes. Carrie, it's a strawberry pie. Can you see pie. over here, baby? No, hang on. Okay. And I like to make sure that my bottom's not wet. Uh, I don't know if it would hurt it or not, but I like to try and be sure of that. All right. I always close the vent if you're doing pressure. Close my vent, and I'm going to do manual. What did I say? Four minutes. Now, there we go. There's that. So, y'all, I apologize for the jerky camera movements. I've just got a little, I really wasn't prepared for this technologically. I've just got a little cheap tripod and I'm just kind of moving the camera manually. All right, so now the rolls. Okay, let me open. All right, let me get my strawberries. Start getting, where are all the strawberries, babe? Right here. Okay, I'm gonna start getting my strawberries ready. I'm gonna have to wash them right quick. And what this would be, you would cut up about a half a pint of strawberries is what is gonna go in there. Hang on a second. Uh-huh. So, for those of you just joining us, Patty's doing three things. Tell them, recap, Patty, what all you got going on. Because okay. we got people asking like what's in the pot. So okay. people just joining us. Okay, um, we're, our strawberry pie, we've already made our pie crust over here and it's cooling. And my liquid for the, the for the strawberry pie right there it's cooling too that's made I have rolls that are rising in the warmer warming drawer and I have squash bits going in the instant pot so I'm multitasking so now I'm getting ready to cut up the strawberries and it calls for a half a pint of strawberries in the strawberry pie so let me find. I'm scared about why that you thought you were making some kind of pie in the instant pot. No, I thought, but you know, I thought about um, what was I thinking about? Uh, bread in the instant pot. Somebody's asked me about that. Might have to give it a go. Yeah, I would like to figure that out. I have made a cheesecake in there. I bought the pan, so it, I could maybe do some kind of pan bread, but it would need to be kind of a moist bread. I don't know. So where are you trimming those strawberries into? This is our chicken bucket for our chickens that we have moved. Yay, they're over here. They have a very small yard right now and Tommy's gonna be working on getting some fence up. And I've left my strawberries, I got them day before yesterday and I didn't put them in the fridge so I have a few little bad spots on them. But, as you can see, they're mostly all ripe too. So, you know, either I lose a few or I would have had to cut up a few and freeze some that weren't all the way red, so or not as red, so it's no big deal. You can just cut those little bad spots off. 
Thanks, Tammy. Tammy's reporting some great news about Tara's granddad that, uh, yes. that he has come out of the operation and he's going to be fine. So that's amazing. And yeah, you know, yesterday, yeah. uh, I didn't know about it until this morning, until she went live this morning. Um, they actually had told her, had said that he didn't have long to live. Yeah, I think so, they were thinking that it was, was like scary. a hole or something, and it turned out just to be a blockage. Uh, that's what Tammy said, too. And, so, uh, so God's good. Yes, indeed. Appreciate his mercy. Okay, you know what? I said a pint, but this is looking like, I mean, a half a pint. This is looking like about a pint that I'm doing here. So, because this is a two pint. Well, it's one pound, but it looks about the size of like two of those little baskets, and I used about half of them. So, yeah. let me give these a quick, quick rinse. Y'all can look at the chicken bucket while she's doing that. <laughs> Chickens are going to be happy today. Sherry, I can tell Daryl why you need an Instant Pot. Because you can set it and walk away. That's yep. the, uh, you know, everybody knows about pressure. Not everybody. Lots of people know about pressure cooking. But the, the ability to set it and go do other things. I mean, look, Patty's got her stuff. She's not having to pay attention to the Instant yeah, Pot and watch it. She's able to do several other things while it's doing its thing. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, it's just so nice. Now you're just going to slice these like that. And you're not going to add any additional sugar or anything to this, to the strawberries. It's already added in the filling. Yeah, it's in the filling, so. Thanks, cat lover. Any questions or anything while I'm doing this? Uh, no, just good Good comments. Uh, okay, great. Cat lover says watching while she's working in the kitchen. Oh, good. Don't hurt yourself, cat lover. Pay attention <laughs> to what you're doing. <laughs> That's when I have to catch Tara's live show because it's at 5.30 our time in Central. And that's when I'm cooking. So I usually have the phone sitting up on in the windowsill to better watch her show. Come on, Mountain Mama. So she wants well, to come for supper. <laughs> well, she'd have to she, she'd have to fly here because this is lunch. <laughs> we haven't had lunch yet. Yeah, we're having a yeah, we're sacrificing our lunch time. Yeah. To serve you people, <laughs> our lovely viewers. <laughs> yeah, Tommy. This is when Tommy can help me out. Is at the at his lunch time. So. Well, look at there. Lemonade Farm says, so glad you're live today. I'm laid up with a swollen knee. Sorry oh, about no. that. Nothing to do but my knitting and was also looking for an Easter dessert. The pie oh, cool. sounds good. Oh, it's amazing. Now, you, it does call for Cool Whip Cool Whip on the top. So you're going to top it with Cool Whip. But it's a, it's a very simple, simple pie. They're good, Tammy. They came from, I don't know if you, you know, since you're... Since you seem to be a Tiger fan, you you might know about famous Ponchatoula strawberries. Yeah, Ponchatoula. You know, Ponchatoula, Louisiana, which is near Hammond, Louisiana. I guess on the south side of Hammond, is that right? I think so, because coming from New Orleans, you see the Ponchatoula exit first. Uh, the, uh, these came from, these are famous Ponchatoula strawberries. That's where they have the strawberry festival in Ponchatoula. This and, is uh, well, good news. This is cooled. My, my liquid has cooled. Oh, hang on. I'm not adjusting. Oh. My liquid has cooled nicely, but my pie shell has not. So, we still have to wait on that. Let's check on the rolls, though. I almost stuck my pie shell over in that pan of ice water. That would have been a huge boo-boo because it would have cracked. Oh, I've got an idea, though. Well, what is your idea? Well, this is so loose in here. I've got another pie pan. You better be careful. Yeah, it might break, huh? It might break. Yeah. I guess I won't do that. We're live, remember? Yeah, we're you live. You can't here. edit that out if it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the rolls are not risen yet. Let me turn up my warmer. All right, now this is... Hadn't that started one. counting yet. Yeah. All right. One thing I do need to do is I need to feed my sourdough starter. So I can do that while we're doing, while we're waiting. While you're getting so, ready to do that, explain mm -hmm. what you're waiting on on the Instant Pot. 
Oh, the Instant Pot is coming up to pressure. It, uh, you know, it was, it was totally cold, which even if I would have sauteed something, it would have still had to come to pressure. So it's right, the inside temperature, it's getting hot and the pressure's rising. And uh, as the pressure comes up and the little thing, I don't know what you call it, on the old fashioned instant, uh, old fashioned uh, pressure pots, we call it a jiggler, but it doesn't jiggle. It's a, it's a, the valve, I guess. It comes up, and then it'll start holding the pressure. And then, as soon as it comes up to around 10, 10 pounds of pressure, it'll start counting down. The four will come up, and then it'll start going down. But I can hear it in here. It almost sounds like it's boiling in there. So. So it should anyway. be any minute now and come up to pressure. Yeah. Start the count now. I gotta wash this out right quick. Jenna, we do um, we do the local farmers market here in Brookhaven, and Patty does mostly bread. And we do some other things. Uh, send us an email, market at aldermanfarms.net, and we can talk all about it. They can't hear you. Okay. Kari, um, we've got, uh, I don't know if it's Carrie or Kari, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, we've got the, the, the squash bisque recipe is on page 16 of Patty's ebook, 20 Easy Instant Pot Recipes. And it is on our website, aldermanfarms.net. You can go to the digital store, and it's right there for a mere five dollars. And you'll get it and uh, oh, and let me nineteen you, others. Let me tell you another thing about the Instant Pot book. If uh, you didn't hear, we I, I, I talked about this on our live show. Um, that the Instant Pot book, I'm going to be adding recipes to it. So right now it's $5, and after it gets a certain amount of recipes in it, the price will go up, but whoever buys it now or has bought it, bought it before, that we will be sending out an update once we uh, get a few recipes. I won't send up an update, uh, update if I just add one or two recipes, but as I add more recipes to it and get maybe about 10 or something, you'll get an email with an update where you'll have for five dollars you'll get to have all the recipes so anyway that's the uh, way we're going to do that i want to show tommy uh would you turn the phone down please i'm working with this little starter here um you can see around the edges like right around here how it has it has had risen up and i've really i've been being really bad and kind of neg neglecting my starter so anyway, it's time to feed this. I should have fed it yesterday. So what I'll do is I'll just stir this all back down into it. And this is just a little bit of starter. It's only up to about right there. So I'm gonna feed it with a, with a uh, oh, I got a half a cup. I'm gonna feed it with a fourth of a cup of milk, fourth of a cup of flour, and about an eighth of a cup or two tablespoons of uh, sugar. So. Instead of keeping a big a big starter going, this is what I'm doing. I'm just working with a little bit a little starter, because you know it's mainly me and Tommy that eats it. The kids come through and will eat some, but I just don't need a whole bunch of it. So that's why I'm just working with a little. I have more in the refrigerator, and what I'm going to do is just pull out when I'm ready to go, and uh, start feeding a little bit at a time like that. So. And I think my fourth of a cup is dirty. I've got a few fourth of a cups, and I think they're all dirty. So I'm going to use half of a half a cup. And, I, and a lot of people don't know about the sourdough starter. You don't have to feed it all the time. You can just you can keep it in the refrigerator and take it out like once a week, once a month, and feed it depending on your starter. Okay, I hear, I've heard the valve go off on the Instant Pot, and so it's going to start uh, counting down in just a few minutes. What did I say? Two tablespoons is an eighth of a cup, so. Yeah. 
I really want to do some sourdough live. Um, I just really don't know how I can do that because, you know, with the sourdough, you let it rise all night. And so uh, if I were to do the sourdough completely live from start to finish, we would have to start off at night then come back in the morning and then come back when it bakes because I do it usually is about an hour uh, I mean three hour rise time after you get it made up so anyway but I what I have been craving is some pizza loaf that is just one of my favorite things that uh, I've been making with the sourdough mm -hmm. and so there it is and it'll get busy working for me uh, and It'll probably be ready to bake with. I may mix that bread tonight or in the morning. So. Linda, Bar Linda Bar uh, Barfield wants to know, can you do boiled peanuts in that Instant Pot? You can, and I did them, and they're good. Oh, I didn't put that in the book. Well, that's one thing. I need to do it again and get uh, write that and put that in the yeah, book. Yeah, we need to add that to the... To the one hour. Pot. It took me one hour. One yeah. hour to do boiled peanuts in the Instant Pot. Oh, write that down somewhere, Tommy. I need to remember to add that to the Instant Pot book. All right. It's counting down now, so that's good. Let me check the rolls. The Instant Pot she's referring to has come up to pressure, and it is counting down from three okay. minutes now. All right, this is cooling off some now. Pie crust is cooled or cooling. No, it's cooling. Let me move that I'm gonna find a different spot on the counter. I put it on this rack, and I shouldn't have done that. I should have left it straight on the granite because the uh, the granite does pull the heat out better. It pulls cold and pulls heat. <laughs> Lemonade Farm says Patty is the sourdough queen. <laughs> well, thank you. I um I really enjoy I really enjoy doing it um but I uh it's just it's just so hard to do it live so I'm just trying to figure out a way now I could do multiple batches where it would be ready one at a time and I think I'm going to do that showing how to just to make the regular loaf so Tammy wants to know is that just a paper towel around your starter yes it is I'm sorry. You know, I do things so offhand. I just forget that. Not uh, offhand, so often. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just, I forget. Yeah, and what the, what you do, this is just a paper towel, and you can use just a rubber band around it. That's fine, too, but I much prefer, and see, this is just, this is a, a pint and a half cannon jar. I'd rather keep the, uh, use the ring because you want, you want air to be able to get to it. What this does, it keeps any bugs or uh, dust or anything like that out of it. And so. But natural yeast can get in. Yes, yes. So. And, and I, we do sell the sourdough starter. Um, I dehydrate it and it's uh, $8. Shipping and sh including shipping. Eight fifty, which includes, oh, it's eight fifty. Includes yeah. shipping. Yeah, that's right. Our sh uh, so that includes shipping and everything, and we give you the instructions on how to rehydrate it, and all the way through to making your first first loaf of bread. So about your daily feedings and everything. So and usually with my sourdough starter, uh, there's not all the waste. How when you typically have to feed a sourdough starter and you have to throw some away and then feed it. I've come up with a method where you just start out with a small amount and you build on it. So usually by the time it's time to make bread, um, it's by the time it's active enough to make bread, you have the right amount to be making your bread. Okay, now that's our instant pot. Now, and, and oh, wait a minute. Let me see, let me look at my recipe again. Because I'm thinking it does say, does it say natural pressure release? I believe so. No, it says quick release. There's a difference with the Instant Pot. Natural pressure release would mean after it beeps like this, you turn it off and you just let the pressure come down naturally. Quick release is when you release the pressure quickly, like this. Now this is gonna be loud for a few minutes, y'all. Oh, cool. Sorry about yeah. that. Well, I mean, I may not be able to talk. Well, I'm turning it the wrong way because I have it the wrong way. It goes that way. So, and that takes a few minutes to vent, but I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, blender and stuff like that out now. So. Okay. 
not going to reach. Would it be better if I blended it right here, Tommy? Or over there? Or I guess here would be better, huh? Are we having a booth at the uh, Great Appalachian Homesteading Conference? Yes, we are. Yes, Daryl or Siri, we are having a booth at the Great Appalachian Homesteading Conference, which is coming up pretty soon, first part of May. Yes, not far off at all. I want to show, can, can you see this on there, Tommy? Is it showing good? Yeah. Like to take the lid off, you just do this. Back on. It's just I love this ninja. Can you put it on at, a, at an angle? Well, you say it's easy. You put it on like that, and you're like, it's on there. So, but I think I'm going to leave that right there. It's almost done. Let me check the rolls again. They are rising up a little bit. Not not real big, but they're rising. So. Okay, you wait till the steam is completely out and your little valve is back down where it started. Then it's safe to open. Okay. I'm going to show you what we got here. Very hot. Cindy, I'm afraid that's too big of a question to cover in the time frame of this uh, this live stream. Cindy asked, how do you make bread after you've done the starter? Oh, okay. But we've got videos on our channel uh, that, you know, sourdough start to finish, basically, or how to make sourdough bread as a playlist. It covers all of that. We're going to be redoing a lot of those. And Patty also has an upcoming uh, ebook, Sourdough Start to Finish, that will cover every step of the process yeah and also that we have a free pdf of, of our sour, my sourdough bread recipe too on our uh website yeah Woo, that the steam is burning store. my thumb i can stick it in my mouth because i'm cooking for my family Woo, that was hot on my thumb okay and I do, I t I'm going to tell y'all too that I typically used to, would double this recipe for the family because they uh, would eat it up. But for me and Tommy, this is just the right amount. I'm doing something wrong. You know, that that well, I had it, was putting it on the wrong, right, wrong, wrong way. Okay. Now what I like to do is, now I'm licking my fingers because this is for me and Tommy and he don't care. All right, how much milk did it say? I don't remember. I just put a little bit. I've, I've made this recipe for years so I don't always go exactly by the recipe. I may have water under my phone, no I don't. Okay, it says for one cup of milk or less. So what I like to do is put my milk in here and then blend it around to get all the rest of that off in there, or it helps to get some of it off. Now, Mama, I see that question, and I'm going to ask it at the appropriate time. Got 
Mountain Mama wants to know, have you ever put your ranch seasoning mix in with your sourdough? You know, I have not. I never have. Has she tried it? I don't, I don't think so because she said, uh, if yes, is it good? Oh, okay. But, the, but okay. that's interesting. That's very interesting because um, that would be very good. Hmm. That would be a different taste, too, to bring to the market. Can you make this recipe with butternut squash? Donna White Christensen wants to know. I don't know why you couldn't use it with uh, butternut squash. Um, maybe a little bit different flavor. But I don't see why you couldn't. I mean, I've actually made it with uh, part zucchini squash too, because I've not I've not had the yellow squash. So this is just regular, you know, straight neck yellow squash. And Sherry Power said that their new favorite dish is the jambalaya from our Twenty Easy Instant Pot recipe. Oh, book. great! Said it was so good they ate on it for three days. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for your time and work. Oh, hey, thank it was you. probably better on day three, right? Yeah, oh, to me, the jumble it does. It gets better and better. But the, uh, can, can you, see, baby, show them the pot, baby, where they can see what it looks yeah, turned out with like. And see, so you can see the little uh, orange flecks in there. That's the no, carrot. No, I probably can't. Oh, you Bring can't? it up a little closer, can you? Mm -hmm. I'll see if I can get it to adjust. It may steam up the camera. Yeah, though. we don't have professional lighting here, so it's not going to be as, you, you know. I'm work, I, talking with Mike at Living on the Dime, and I, I think I can get some. It doesn't have to be studio lighting. I just need to get the right kind of lumens and the right kind of light. Maybe a little bit more soft. I added a little bit more Tonys. I want it to. You don't want it hot necessarily. I mean, if you do, you do. That's fine. But um, you want to have a taste of, that it has a little bit of the uh, cayenne kick to it, and um, so I added just a little bit more. And mm, a little bit of salt, and that tastes just right. Now, I'm going to put it back in my Instant Pot base. Tommy, you're doing the camera, baby. You're forgetting. Sorry. Put it back in my Instant Pot base right there, and it'll just keep the heat in right there. So I'm going to check the rolls. I think they're about ready to bake. Now, I want to tell you, this roll recipe had... Uh, let me put this up on 400 before I forget that. Had I, had, had I done this roll recipe the right way, you let it rise once, push it down, and let it rise again, these rolls would be a little bit bigger. Uh, now, but they're plenty big enough because if you remember, they were not even touching or anything. But So I'm going to go ahead and bake these to bake them at 400 for 8 to 12 minutes. And I actually just got mine up to 400. So, and another thing to do, if you're if you're doing rolls kind of fast, like I just did them, instead of my, I, I just left my oven on from baking the pie shell because I knew we'd be baking quickly again. But one thing you can do is start it off in a cold oven, so that gives it a little bit more time to rise up. I wish I'd have thought to do that, but it does make you do have to extend your baking time because it's this the temperature's having to come up. But anyway, okay, now let's see about the pie. We've sold a couple of uh, instant pot books. Thank oh, y'all. Thank y'all so much. All right, now here's the pie. The pie is not in there, but y'all have the recipe right here. I've told y'all all the ingredients. Let me get the Cool Whip, and we'll have that. You're right about that, and I am one blessed man. I'm <laughs> blessed plum sideways, as we say here in this city. Thank you. Hey, Big Bear. Hey, Big Bear. Okay, now, here's the pie crust. Now, what about, we're putting liquid in there. Thank you, Maxine. And we have holes in the crust. So, what you do is you take some butter, and you fill your holes. And I, this butter is a little, it may be a little too firm for this. I've got some here that's not. And so... And, I, and the holes are in the crust because I put them there. But you just, 
if you can can they see that Tommy if the, the holes and yeah then I think so you just rub the butter across and it fills the holes while you're doing that uh, Mount Mama wants to know if we'll have some some uh, physical copies of any of the books at I, the Tennessee conference I plan on getting on that the the sourdough book should be released hopefully this week we're going through pictures right now I, we were trying to have pictures for the uh, the book the ebook uh, the printed books probably won't have pictures but um and I would I'm hoping to have printed books of the instant pot and the sourdough when we come now there's gonna be it's gonna be a limited amount because you know they are going to cost us to have them printed and everything and they're going to be i got this idea from danny and wanda what he's doing with his books uh he's having them done to where with they're just uh like paperback card stock on the front and back but where you can actually put them in a three ring binder and so i plan on doing other cookbooks too and so that's that's my plan is to have them uh, and I'm not sure the size, whether it's going to be an 8 by 11 or a half of that, but that's what my goal is. If I can find some little binders that are smaller, I think that would make for a nice size little cookbook that you can add to. And so that's, that's my plan. So I, I have to get all that checked out and everything. Okay, now, let's see, there's a hole right there. I like it when there's lots of holes because that means lots of butter. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I'm very pleased with this pie crust. Y'all see it moving and turning around in here? And this made it with the butter. So that's the first time I've made a pie crust with butter. Okay, now have that done. What you're going to do is you're going to line the bottom with your strawberries. I think it could have a few more strawberries than that. What you think? Yeah, it could, but that's fine. Well, that's true though. When I put the liquid on there, that's true. I better just stay stay with the program. Okay, now I have that, and I'm gonna pour my liquid over. That's my oven getting up to temperature because I had raised it some. Everything's better with butter. That's that's right, Donna. <laughs> now. Typically, what I would do was, is put this pie in the refrigerator and let this gel before I put the Cool Whip on there. I'm not going to do that where I can show you the finished pie. I'm going to go ahead and put the Cool Whip on there now. And it really, one pie will take about a half of a container of Cool Whip, I believe. And hopefully I'm not going to make too big of a mess with this. It's going to be hard to spread since it's not gelled. Yeah. To clarify, though, the, on the books, uh, all of our all of Patty's cookbooks will be ebooks certainly, and we intend to have printed versions of them if we can work out the logistics and all that. Mainly so, for when we go to conferences, but yeah, you mainly know, for when we go to we'll see how today. shipping is going to be on that. And you know, and I try to do a little survey asking people because I really felt like people my age and 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 older for sure would. Um, kind of like to have a printed copy it is convenient to have it uh on your phone or on your computer but um i asked even my daughters and some of their friends and everything and uh they said that they would rather have a printed copy so i was really surprised at that generation that you know the more of the technology generation would prefer a printed copy too so now, I, I think I'm using a little more than half of this Cool Whip, so. Big Bear's wondering why you didn't make that pie when they came to visit. Because strawberries <laughs> were not in season, Big Bear. And I'm just doing this uh, like this to make it kind of pretty. And I'm not, uh, and, and if it was gelled, I could make sure all of my little edges were sealed up good, but they're not, so. Anyway, there is the strawberry pie. That's done. We have our squash bisque done, and the rolls have just a few minutes. So I'm going to stick this in the fridge right quick where we can have some in a little bit. And we've been live for about an hour and five minutes or so, so that's a lot accomplished in 
an hour, give or take a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. That really is. And Patty, how many, uh, I'm, I'll probably have to relay it unless you get back over here, but how many times can we, how many servings of that squash bisque recipe do you think? Um, I mean, I know we usually you know, eat know. off of it a few times. Let's measure it and see. That would be a good thing to know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there were six of us when I had all four kids at home. And everybody could eat their fill of it, and there would be a little bit left over. So that's why I always made rolls with it to kind of fill them up. Um, and I always made these rolls, and that, that's what they expect when I make it. They want these rolls, too. But um, for families sitting there, and we would eat, you know, and we had, it was three guys, so they ate a little bit more. Um, but we would have leftovers, but I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how many to say, uh, how many servings it is, you know. Dick Bear says, I'll have to plan my trips better then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, retired and prepping. We appreciate that. What she say? Said you're great, Alderman Farm. Oh, thank you. Can you use frozen strawberries? Well, can't hear you. Can I have to come back over here? What? Come back over here before you talk. I said, well, I don't know. Um, because I'm not knowing because when you have strawberries that are frozen, they get juicier. I would imagine there's a way to do it, and maybe I'm putting strawberries in the freezer, so maybe I can um, play with that and come up with a recipe for frozen strawberries um, because, you know, you, you wouldn't want the pie too runny, but it might be as simple as adding more jello into it, you know? Now, Mama, what do you do? Because she, she says she uses frozen strawberries. Oh, she okay. just thaws them out. Okay. Do you have to adjust the recipe uh, like Patty just talked about if you're using thawed out frozen strawberries. You know, there is a measurement on these pots, but I checked it and it is, it's not right. Okay, let's see. That's a pro tip. Don't trust the measurements on your instant pot. Well, yeah, and I, I've heard a lot of people say that. All right, that's close enough. Um, let's see, that is six cups right there. All right, so Patty's uh, squash bisque recipe located on page 16 of her ebook, 20 Easy Instant Recipes, makes approximately six cups of squash bisque. So you can decide how many servings that is. Well, Grandma is in the house. Hey. on these rolls. I smell them. Mmm. Ooh, look at that. And Tommy, do you want me to let them brown a little more or you want me to leave them like that? Now ask Tommy because he likes them. He likes, uh... Gooey. Yeah, kind of underbaked. <laughs> Stuff. So, okay. now, wait, now, you know, I've been doing all this cooking, so I think uh, we need to have a vote. Tommy has to wash all those dishes that I've dirty. I've just fine. thrown over there. <laughs> so, Sorry, I don't have the smell of vision turned on right now. Okay, now what I like to do with my rolls. I like to come back now and and honestly for the market I cook them a little browner than this and I would prefer them a little browner but I will eat the ones around the edges so I could have just turned this pan around and baked them for another one or two minutes and it would have they would have been more evenly brown and and browner all over you know but Tommy likes his like this so you do this right when you take it out of the oven and, the, and it just melts the butter on nicely. Sherry over at 7D Farms, uh, she, uh, she keeps melted butter like in a little crock pot. And she brushes her stuff with butter like mm. that. 
which that's what I need to do next market season. So, all right, now we've done strawberry pie, we have done squash bisque, and we have done rolls. So, quick rolls too. And you know these rolls, they, do, they, they, they look pretty good. I'd like for you to, but before we sign off, I'd like for you to get the strawberry pie and put it up here. Okay. And that, that'll make a nice thumbnail okay. shot. All right. I was gonna uh, cut one of these rolls open. No worries, Big Bear. That's a fair trade. Big Bear says, yep, Tommy has to do the dishes just because he gets to eat that pie. <laughs> Look at that. Nice. Nice. So. I wish y'all could smell that. It just permeates the house. <laughs> bread, fresh baked bread smell is just about the nicest smell in a house. <laughs> and I've told people I'm not, I'm not huge with having just to eat bread, but I, I do, when it comes out the oven and it's hot, I do like to taste it. And y'all look how soft it is. Anyway, okay. Now you want me to bring the pie over here? Yeah, and position it for me for a nice uh, thumbnail. All right. So just hold it? No, because that's going to just sit it on this. Okay. For me. All right, now just be still for a minute. Me? Yeah. Okay, carry on. <laughs> All right, well, now I have a bite of roll in my mouth. I just thank y'all so much for watching and joining with us um, today. Um, if you're interested in our Instant Pot book, this recipe was on page 16, um, and it's 20 easy Instant Pot recipes. And you can find that on our digital store on aldermanfarms.net. Um, I don't have, uh, Tommy, are you going to get the pie instructions print, uh, typed up maybe? Added to the end of this video? I can. And try to do that. Um, but anyway, and so, and there's lots of other recipes in the book, and we will be continually adding recipes to it. So we just hope y'all have a great day, and, and, and thank y'all from the bottom of our hearts from Alderman Farms.